On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, I have action footage from the red hot bite that is going on right now on the south shore. I'll also show you some of the new lures from Yozuri that the bass have been falling for and of course our correspondents check in from around the island or here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Veterans Day and because of those who sacrificed for us through the years, we have our freedom that we are enjoying now. Let us not forget that. If you're a subscriber to the Fishman Magazine and you're looking for a convenient way to view the digital edition, we now offer each issue in a PDF file format you can view right in your browser or download and view off the grid. This option makes reading the magazine easier than ever. On this week's surf report, we saw action from out east in Montauk and the North Fork slow down a little bit. Some smaller bass were still being picked in both these areas, but the Albies and Large Blues moved on as it seems. Blackfish are still tied to the shore on the North Fork and the rest of the North Shore for that matter. Mid-Island Sand Beaches did see some better bass action. I even got word that some casters were picking bass by day with diamond jigs. Is this a sign of some sand deals around? We shall see. After dark, fishing stayed productive with catches of bass in the 25 to 30 pound class coming up. Additionally, I did discover a lot of bass being caught in the Great South Bay, so this might be a good time to hit those local docks in the early mornings and sunset. Fishing out in the West End seemed to be a little slower, but the guys from the local shops out that way let me know that Jones and Breezy Jetties were producing some bass after dark for surf fishermen. I myself also managed to get out with the guys from Jetsum Salvage Company apparel last week. We fished the reef at Mariches for tog using green crabs and rigs. While the fish were being picky, we managed to find some bites on a small piece of the reef away from the rest of the boats. Thank you for the neat drones footage, guys. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen has the outlook for the weekend. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's uh, check that weekend forecast, see what's going on. Before we do, I was away last week and uh, was able to get some fishing in freshwater on the Lake Ontario tributaries upstate New York. And we did okay. We had some brown trout, a little bit of action there on the, uh, the fly fishing, the fly rod. So we did all right. Had some also uh, decent king salmon, uh, some males, females too. And uh, these were okay on the light tackle on the fly rods had a pretty good time there and again always uh, fun to swing some flies and enjoy some of the uh, the sweet water in upstate new york weather was pretty good not too bad a little chilly but uh, overall decent all right check the weekend forecast see what we got going on you can always check your favorite apps favorite websites any weather tools you have as we get closer this is a general overview general heads up water temps of course with the chilly weather have come down we got a lot of 50s lower 60s now Wave heights on Saturday, you know, a little bit of a chop left over there, you know, perhaps. I think Saturday morning, if you want to do some stuff, you know, any time between 6 a.m. and like 11 a.m., starts to get rough midday, late afternoon. We have a big west breeze coming in with a big uh, kind of uh, winter cold front coming in, and it, uh, it's going to be a little choppy there, especially to the east side of Long Island. Two to fours, four to eights, and it'll settle down late Sunday afternoon. So a little windows early Saturday and later Sunday. Looks like bookend right there. As a window of the uh, nice weather early Saturday morning, and then watch how the winds after about noontime, you know, get in early. You know, they start to go really up there. I see some 20s and 30s on there from the west. Pretty strong cold front Saturday afternoon. Uh, Sunday starts out gusty and breezy, westerly 15 to 20, and then perhaps settling down a little bit better late in the day, but I think Saturday morning would be the pick. There's a high tides, north shore, south shore, north shore for the morning, south shore for the early afternoon on Saturday. It's in the 60s Saturday, but a colder day Sunday. We got some 50s, so just be aware of that. Check that guru confirming Saturday. You know, the window is the morning right there till about, you know, noontime, 1 p.m. You can do it and get out in the ocean, but look at the winds there. Late Saturday night and, you know, pretty gusty westerly into Sunday until maybe late in the day when things settle down a bit. So either way, be safe. Uh, catch them up. Have a wonderful weekend. Matt, back to you. Now let's get the latest from Montauk with Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings everybody from Montauk. Uh, this is probably the most spectacular week we've had so far this fall. Um, everything was kind of coming together. The weather cooperated, so everybody was able to get out and do what they wanted to do. Um, in regards to light tackle and fly fishing, um, plenty of false albacore, plenty of bass on the surface. 
Um, we were even chasing some small bluefin tuna um, just off Montauk Point, we're right 30, 40 pound range. Broke a couple off of the boat, so that was a good sign. Um, big news is black fishing, sea bass, cod fishing. That's just been spectacular. All the charter boats here have been going out and uh, getting their fill, full and limits and stuff like that. Uh, Paul Bruno and the Elizabeth II got a bunch of nice pictures. He's got some slammer, blackfish, bunch of sea bass, and he was catching codfish. And he also mentioned he had a total boatload of triggerfish to boot. So the water temperature is still pushing around 62 to 64 degrees, so everything's working really well. Striped bass fishing still very good on the charter boats, getting plenty of slot fish. Uh, like I said, there's some bluefin tuna around, but the season's closed. But if you still wanted to go out and catch one and let it go, you're more than welcome to do that. All right, until next week, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, the weather's not necessarily looking to be the best, but you might still be able to slip out there and catch a couple of fish. Other than that, everybody enjoy. Thank you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Guys. Thanks, Matt. So bite's still been pretty strong, you know, given the rough weather. But if you get out there, the bite's been pretty good. Still some bluefin around and still some solid sea bass action. And, you know, if it's on those rougher days, the porgies have still been good in the Peconic near Sag Harbor. And also as it's been getting colder, the black fishing has been getting better, especially near Plum God and Orient Point. Yeah, definitely. And bottom fishing is still going pretty strong off of Montauk. We've seen some nice cod and some nice sea bass being caught. Um, and obviously days are getting shorter and, and winter is coming, but it's important to get out while you can and enjoy while we last. So. I hope everyone has a nice week and a good weekend ahead. Thanks, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Mike. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, fishing last weekend was really good. I was on a buddy's boat out of Mariches on Friday and then Sunday and throwing bucktails right at the mouth of the inlet. Got into a, a ton of small fish, like 26, 27 inches. Really great time on light tackle. On Friday, saw some gannets diving, went to the area, uh, screen lit up a couple of times, got a few nice ones, diamond jigging, which was a blast. He also had spectacular fishing on Saturday. Sunday was a little bit slower. The beach has been a little bit quiet. Uh, did manage one yesterday on uh, Joe Bag's Patriot fish, so um, they do seem to be keyed in on sand eels. The, um, you know, between those bucktails and the diamond jigs on Friday and Sunday, and then um, yesterday getting this one on the uh, Patriot fish. So, you know, work, um, you know, keep that in mind when uh, when you're out there. We'll, we'll see what happens is, you know, all those fish that were Montauk have to make their way up the beach. Not that I'm looking for schoolies and small fish, but the volume of fish would be nice. And there's usually a bunch of nice ones mixed in with that. So um, even though it was a slow week, looking forward to next week, got the full moon and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, blackfish bite still going pretty strong. Number of the party boats doing well. Hampton Lady having some really good trips and uh, he's doing a uh, 3 a.m. to, or I'm sorry, 4 a.m. to 3 p.m. trip. Been getting some really nice size sea bass, good amount of tog, um, as well as some nice size cod mixed in. So looking to fill the cooler, get on the Hampton Lady, any of the boats in the area. It's uh, definitely some good fishing going on there. Not hearing really much on the tuna bite and um, you know, that's about it. Just gonna be hitting the beach all weekend and hopefully get into a, to a whole pile of them. So hope you do too. I'll talk to you next week, catch them up. Back to you, Matt. The bite has been red hot in the area around the Fire Island Inlet, and the fish are not only in the ocean, they're in the shallows too, so don't overlook this opportunity. A lot of times you don't have to go deep if you want to catch striped bass. Sometimes these fish are right in the shallows, you know, two, three feet of water. A good place to look is sandbars. You want to cast right on top of these sandbars and work plugs like this top knock your Zuri pencil right off of them. And a nice walk the dog action will get the attention of these fish and sometimes the hitch can be ferocious and it's almost like bone fishing in a way with these striped bass. You can see them circling around the boat Look and just an annihilating these plugs. It's a lot of fun on light tackle. I suggest you give it a try. I'm going to go over my tackle and equipment with you guys to show you what makes this fishing the most fun for me. So I'm using a 7 foot inshore rod weighted 3 eighths to 3 quarters ounce. I have 10 pound Berkeley X9 braid on here in high vis yellow so I can keep a good eye on the line. Uh, on my leader over here, I'm using 25 pound test um, inshore uh, cigar fluorocarbon. Tied over here, uni to uni knot, about a three foot leader. 
and I have a little tactical angles clip in case I want to uh, switch the plug out and I have a VR50 reel which is it, the lightest fan stall they do make. It's a light setup, I could fish this all day and it puts a, uh, these small fish put a really good bend in this rod. Here are the new Yozori lures that I use to target fish inside the bay. The 3D intro popper is great with a rhythmic popping motion. The concave face of the plug throws a lot of water attracting game fish. The top knock pencil on the other hand can be used in combination with a walk the dog style retrieve and sometimes works better with picky fish. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island Report, striped bass fishing is red hot. Looks like we're gonna have a nice Veterans Day and right through Sunday weather-wise. Uh, a lot of fish, well outside was a little picky, but we get a good day. I think Thursday's gonna be good for offshore. And then if that doesn't work, I mean, from the inlet all the way back to Ocean Beach, there's striped bass just about every place on plugs and bait. So it's gonna be a good weekend, good weekend for fishing for striped bass. And also black fishing is excellent as well with a lot of nice keepers now on the inside. So. Uh, Good weekend, a holiday weekend, uh, Veterans Day, of course, very sacred in our hearts. But uh, also, uh, that's about it, I guess, for this week. It should be a great weekend, lots of fish around, good weather. So catch them up, have fun, talk to you next week, Matt. With our flying freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, it's the fall. It's a, actually a late fall run this year. Uh, we're getting the water's cooling down, a lot more bass are being caught. Uh, a good friend of mine, Tom, he's fishing over in the Robert Moses area, surf fishing with a plug rod. Uh, he's actually uh, done very well. One night he went out, he had over 20 fish. Biggest one was 35 inches. And you know what? Not one other soul was there. But he is fishing in the middle of the night. Uh, as far as uh, by me, over in the western part, Bill and uh, Dennis went out on Dennis's duck boat, found bass in the back bays, up against the side bank, but more importantly, they fished the Jones Inlet and found blitzing bass, all on top order, had a great time. Uh, people, uh, good friends of mine, Tom and Maggie, they actually went over to Jones Inlet just to go out for an hour or two on this beautiful weather we've been having, saw foxes, and they also caught shad. Uh, they fished for about an hour and had a terrific time. As far as uh, uh, the western part of the uh, area, Jesse, uh, Captain Jesse Wynn from One More Cast Charters, he actually uh, has been catching fish in the Jamaica Bay area on the surface with the fly rod. He's put his clients on him. Everyone has smiles. All the photographs, they're all smiling. So it, it's obvious there are fish here. As far as freshwater goes, a newbie came into my shop the other day, just started fly fishing again after many years. Uh, he went out to... Uh, uh, over to Hempstead to practice, and he was surprised. He caught a pickerel and trout. One of the trout that was stocked there back in October. The good thing is, all these ponds, the weeds are dying down, the bluegills are getting active, the bass getting active, and they're stocked with trout, and they're gonna be stocked with trout in a week or two for the for winter. So there is fishing to be had all over the place. As far as the parks go, of course, they're still, the Connect Quad is still fishing well, even when the water was high. My advice, small nymphs, deep. Uh, that's all I can tell you, slow and deep right now. And uh, I'm planning on hitting these ponds because you know what, they're here, they're loaded with fish, why not get out? I can't, I can't guarantee every time you're gonna go out, you're gonna catch fish, but I can guarantee if you don't go out, you're not gonna catch any fish. So until next week, tie lines everybody. Now let's get an update on the Dreamboat Contest with Tim C. Smith. No change on the leaderboard this week, but the big news for the Dreamboat Contest is the TOG entries are coming in. Casper takes the first place slot with his 13 pound entry. Three other TOG entries fill the 7th, 8th, and 9th place spots. With Anthony's 9.4 pound fish, Richard entering a 8.25 pound TOG, and Jerry entering a 7.46 pound blackfish. Also, previous Dreamboat champion Sam Dibner gets in the game with his first place sea bass weighing in at 6.25 pounds. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. From Northport we have Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Oh 
right, taking a little break here in the shop for our Christmas and holiday orders for custom rods. If you need one, make sure you call the shop while we still got time to bust it out. Um, the fishing right now is doing pretty good, whether you're on the, the beach, there's a red hot bite going on the South Shore, but we're talking about the North Shore. In the North Shore, you're going to be focused more on uh, some of these outlets, the river, the Porpoise Channel, Huntington uh, Harbor, Center Port Harbor, all around the areas in Eaton's Neck and on the outside. The, the surf bite is on and off. It's not as hot as it was last week. Last week was rocking and rolling, uh, but the bite on the boat, if you're a boat guy, has been fantastic. Uh, the wind has is, is been much better uh, this past week. So I've seen a lot of people out there catching the blackfish coming in into uh, striped bass or bluefish. They're migrating. So it's on and off, you know, as we get closer towards uh, the end of November to Thanksgiving. Let's see what happens. Uh, right now, the blackfish bite is red hot. We've got a lot of sea bass out there. I think the porgies are starting to move out. They're not as huge as they were last week, but they're still around. The squid fishing's been red hot. A lot of people out there just enjoying themselves. That's an evening bite, remember? And uh, so there's plenty to do if you've got time, whether it's the morning, the afternoon, or uh, the evening. There's a lot going on right now. Get a hold of it. Uh, stop in our shop. We've got lots of great sales going on, on on lures, foul weather gear, boots, you name it. We move a lot of product and we love seeing you here. Again, the positive feedback from the reports is fantastic. Thank you so much. You make me want to go out and do them over and over again. We're going to be here for you and I hope to see you at the shop soon. Blessed holidays coming up. I bid you all peace. Tight lines. Dave Anderson of the New England Fisherman has an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash. Dave. This week in the Coastal Kayak Clash, it was all about the blackfish. We had three nice ones hit the board. We had two at 25 and a half inches, one by Rashawn Williams, one by Justin Oser, and we had a 24 incher logged by Scott Schneider. This shook up the leaderboard a bit. We got Justin Oser leading with nine points, Bob Wagner in second place with seven points, and Rashawn Williams also with seven points in third place. The only thing separating the two of them is the fact that Bob Wagner entered the fish earlier in the tournament than Rashawn did. The fish of the month for November is the blackfish. Seems like it's going to be a pretty good battle coming right down to the wire. As we come into these final two weeks, we're going to have to see who can battle it out for blackfish supremacy. Stay tuned to see what happens. From Seaford, we have Roger Budu. Hey, Matt. Hey, anglers. Good to be back. I know it's been a while, but I do have some good news to report for the South Jones area between Jones Inlet and Debs. Lots of striped bass being picked up on the outside. The bass action is really on fire. Um, between 30 to 50 feet of water and uh, the white bunker spoons seem to really be doing the trick this time of year um, most guys are catching over slot but there are some slot fish mixed in there so you really got to work for them uh, my uh, recommendation is always get out as early as possible you want that day break seems to be the best bite for me and if you have a moving tide that's always going to be best if you're chumming in the back bays the bridges the drains the piers anything like that of course uh, top of the out seems to always do best for me, but um, if you get the the slacker, the incoming, there are still fish. There's just such an abundant amount of striped bass inside the bays right now, and they seem to really be feeding on anything from mullet, um, small bunker, and uh, clam bellies. Um, and I've even caught one, opened up the belly, and they had green crabs in there. So I mean, they're they're feeding on a variety of different bait, which just makes it a lot easier for us to pick them up. Um, you have a good chance with any of those choices. So that's all I have to report for this week. Guys, get out there, catch them up, and uh, hopefully we get some, uh, some meat in our freezers. Matt, back to you. Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, has this report from the Western Sound and South Shore. I've uh, been fishing the Long Island Sound and South Shore beaches, and they're striped bass on anywhere you pretty much go. Uh, looks like some of the big fish on the South Shore has moved on. There should be another wave of fish coming through. Uh, I went out this week and noticed that uh, we were only catching smaller fish. Um, prior to that, anything from 15 to 30 pounds was coming out. Uh, many fishermen were out there and being rewarded for putting in their time. Um, fished the Long Island Sound just to check things out and it's on. It's pretty much well lit with bass up to 30 pounds. Uh, some nice fish coming out and what was nice to see was some guys catching fish and putting it back in which made me really really happy 
Um, you don't see that too much, but it does happen. There is some good people out there. Anyway, um, just want to let you guys know if you put in the time, the time is now, and you will be, you definitely will be re rewarded. Um, fishing has been good, and pretty much just turned on here in the city. Uh, for your local anglers like me, now I don't have to go too far to catch any fish. Just, uh, you can hit the East River, you can hit Staten Island, you can hit Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island Sound. Long Island Sound is doing good, remember? And um, just get out there, guys. The time is now. Before you know it, they're going to be gone and it's going to be too cold. I like cold. I like big fish and big fish hang in the cold. Uh, so, anyway, tight lines. Get out there, catch them up. Back to you, Matt. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact Tim at libayright at gmail.com. Remember to like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, to be a subscriber to the Fishwin Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest and Coastal Kayak Clash. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. And don't forget to thank a veteran. Without them, we may not be fishing. See you next week right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.